What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Stevo, and of course it's now time for week three of the LBA. Now we have another uh, rematch here. My rival Shadow, of course, is the coach of our opposing team this week. And he actually soundly beat me in uh, season five of the LBA. So definitely, definitely want to bring it to him this time. Of course, my co-coach Aiden and I came up with quite an interesting team this week. I am bringing back lead uh, Archaeops, of course, equipped with the Lumberry because we did expect him to lead off with Sableye. Um, and of course, Head Smash has a really great chance of 2 hit KOing defensive Sableye. Uh, of course, Lumberry would bypass the burn. Banded Dragonite just to clean up against his team. A little bit of issues against Gengar if I'm locked into Banded Extreme Speed. Other than that, though, fantastic damage all around. Uh, dual Dance on the uh, Cobalion here because actually against his team Rock Polish is definitely going to be the superior choice but uh, it gave me that opportunity to build my own wing condition uh, just regular substitute swords dancing uh, Pawniard here there are a couple things on his team that really don't want to take a sucker punch I have an opportunity to set up on them which is pretty nice uh, Whimsicott also was an offensive set this week, running Stun Spore just to slow things down like Shell Smash Cloister or faster things like Infernip or Scallopede. Other than that though, we have Psychic, Giga Drain, and Moon Blast just because it has such phenomenal, I'm sorry, not Psychic, Shadow Ball. Good general coverage against his entire team. Um, and then finally, last Pokemon is Scarf Mamoswine. Uh, no Icicle Crash, just with a uh, mix set in order to b hit the uh, either Manaphy or of course Cloister, a little bit harder if they do try to go into more bulkier builds and then I'll hit them on their weaker special defensive side. Not really for Manaphy of course, but more for the super effective damage. But we're gonna get right into the battle of course. Big shout outs to Skyrender for giving me nice, wonderful, high quality for this match. And uh, right off the start here, he's gonna start off with Mega Sableye, which I was so happy to see. Uh, and we are going to have a wonderful head smashing time with Tom Foolery. He does go for will o -Wisp and it connects, but that's why we have Lumberry. Head smash here is so nice because now he no longer has Prankster and he won't be able to outspeed me and nothing on his team wants to take a head smash. He took a long time to decide. He ended up leaving Sableye and so getting that thing out of the way, turn two, fantastic. Now unfortunately two head smashes puts me right into defeatist range, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, that's why it's unfortunately unfortunate. Anyways, though, we're just going to switch into Mammal Swine here, expecting Ice Shard. Uh, Shadow really, really threw me for a loop this battle because he played so straightforward when the first time I battled him, he actually, uh, he predicted me pretty well. Uh, so I wasn't expecting him to play as straightforward as he did in this battle. Now, I did go out into my Scarf Mammal Swine and hit him with, uh, the Freeze Dry. Didn't expect him to have Razor Shell. Uh, I was really hoping right there that he would over predict and go for an ice type move. But uh, here I was really, really worried. I, there was a 50 50 chance that he would switch out, and I really wanted to substitute. But I didn't want to risk him just attacking me and then getting off a little sweep there with Cloyster against my team. Uh, here we have a little bit of mind games here because I needed to see what type of coverage his Inferno had and what type of Inferno it was. We do see Life Orb which is good, but Infernape gets such good coverage, that's not enough information. I needed to know if he has Stone Edge or Hidden Power Ice. It's good to know that he has Fire Punch. I know he probably has Close Combat. I also wanted to see if he had Mock Punch. But with Cobalion in here, if he does have Fire Punch and he's gonna just go for that, Fire Punch does not one hit KO this Cobalion, just because of Cobalion's nice natural defense. And I'm able to one hit KO him with Close Combat because we're fully invested in attack. So. We do get a delicious double down, which those are even more tasty in the in, in league form. But fortunately, Life Orb Recoil actually denies Infernape the KO, so I'm quite okay with that. Uh, I expected him to go out to Scallopede on the double down, and I do nail that correctly. Unfortunately, since we're in defeatist range, we don't quite score the KO there. Uh, I could have gone for Head Smash, but I thought that Acrobatics would have been enough to secure the KO. I was also afraid of uh, missing allowing him to get a speed boost or a source dance or something like that and baton pass it away now here i definitely over predicted i thought for sure he would go for baton pass because sending that boost of uh speed over to gengar or even into manaphy would have done wonders for him but he's go straight for earthquake and 
completely out predicts me there. Now he does miss Rock Slide on my Ben at Dragonite. I was kind of forced to go for Outrage right here because if I went for Extreme Speed and he went out into Gengar and got a substitute up, that would have been pretty bad. Uh, the Rock Slide does miss and that matters only in the sense that since he was not offensive, he wouldn't have KO'd, but that means that Gengar would have been able to KO with the Dazzling Gleam. Now, uh, that doesn't matter too much because I would have outsped with Whimsicott and hit him with a Shadow Ball, um, since we know he wasn't Scarfed. So at the end of the day, it didn't matter too much because he's able to come in with Manaphy here and finish me off because I was locked into a three-turn Outrage. Uh, now this Manaphy, he did run a really, really interesting set on it. I actually decided on Giga Drain over Energy Ball right before the battle started. And if I had run Energy Ball, that would have failed to one-hit KO Manaphy, and it would have actually knocked it into its Salak Barrier range, which would have been horrible because he would have been able to outspeed me on the second one. Uh, but since I do have only enough speed to outspeed Gengar, the rest of that bulk into HP there allows me to barely live Ice Beam and finish off Manaphy for a very, very close 1-0 victory. So, whew, that battle right there just left me with such an adrenaline rush. It was really, really close, and there was basically no hacks outside of the Rock Slide mess, which I don't think mattered in the end. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for the battle, Shadow. Finally breaking our, our losing streak there before we went into the, the triple losing streak in the LBA. So I was very pleased with that. Now the uh, the next matchup that we're actually going to have is going to be that's uh, we're going to be in the week four, of course, and I think week four is actually up against the let's see here let me make sure I get it right ah yes the Quebec City Bertix versus Tid Vicious so that'll be an incredible match because he is the 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 team that just has a Mega Gyarados with a whopping 17 points on the roster. So we're definitely going to have to contend with that. But that'll be something to look forward to. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.